Hey there, and today we're going to be talking about frame rates for video. So there's uh, three main frame rates that people shoot at in the US, and that is 24 frames a second, 30 frames a second, and 60 frames a second. So let's start with 30 frames a second, because that is personally what I use. Now the benefit of 30 frames a second over 24 is that it's just a little bit smoother and you don't have any issues with 2-3 step down. And what that means, 2-3 step down, is if you shoot at 24 frames a second, if you have a 60 hertz monitor, like most monitors these days are, then what it does at 24 frames is it's 2 frames and then it's 3 frames to make it work on that display. And the problem with that is it kind of can be sometimes jittery. So more often, display manufacturers are making it 120 because it divides evenly into 24, 30, and 60. So that is why I shoot 30, because it works on every display without a problem. Now, 24 is more common for movies and bigger productions because that's what it used to be for film. And the reason that was the case is because 24 is about the lowest you can go without your eyes noticing the difference. So back when film making began, you wanted to make your film last as long as possible. So if you shot at 120 frames a second, you would have to have a lot of actual film to make that happen. So 24 is kind of like the least you can go. And because it was that case for so long, that new movies today and content is still made in 24 because it has that filmic old look because that's what it used to be. So I would say if you're in that industry, 24 is the way to go if you're making a movie or something like that. But for like YouTube, I would stay away from 24 just because of the 2-3 step down issue and because it looks a little bit more stuttery than 30. Now there's also 60 frames which is even better, but the problem with that is it's a lot more space. See the difference between 24 and 30 frames a second isn't very much, but the difference between 30 and 60 is double. So say you record a video that's 100 gigs at 30 frames a second. It looks fine and it's totally usable, but if you did that at 60 it'd be 200 gigs, and that's a lot harder to work with to edit. So I would say that 60 frames a second is only beneficial in a broadcast environment or if you're like a gaming channel and you want most amount of frames in your video. Now YouTube doesn't support 120 frames a second so we won't be worrying about that today. So now that you have a rough idea on frame rates let's switch this camera over to 24 to see how that looks. Okay now we're recording at 24 frames a second and this is what that looks like. Now because this video is at 60 frames a second because of the later test this is using that 2-3 step down I talked about earlier. So if you if I move my hand like this you can see there is a little bit of jitter in it when at 60 frames a second. Now, some new displays that change their refresh rate can work very well with 24 frames a second, or if you have a display that is 120 frames a second, it can be easily divided into each frame rate. So now let's switch it over to 30 frames a second to see what that looks like. Okay, so this is 30 frames a second, and because it is half of 60, it is every two frames is one frame. 60. So if I move my hands around there won't be any jitter like there was with 24 frames. So now let's move on to 60 frames a second and see what that looks like. Okay so now we're at 60 frames a second and this is the smoothest out of the options that my camera has for 4k. So this is on a 60 frames a second timeline and this will be the smoothest. So if I move my hand like this, see it's by far the smoothest. So we're good there. Now it could be a little bit smoother if I adjusted my shutter speed, but to make all tests equal with exposure and everything, this is what that looks like. So, you know, much, 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 much smoother. But it will take up a lot more space than 30 frames a second. So that is why I personally do not use that. Now again, if you are live streaming or if you have like a gaming channel or you just want high frame rates, it's totally acceptable to use that. But for a video like this, 30 is probably the best option considering all the benefits. So now let's switch back to 30 for the end of this video. Okay, now we're back at 30. Well, we really aren't actually. See, this whole time I've been saying 24, 30, 60, it's actually not the case. Because back when TVs first came out, they actually had a problem with the power. See, if you're 60 frames a second, but your power is also at 60 frames a second, you can have interference there with old TVs. So it's actually slightly, slightly slower. So 60 frames a second is actually 59.94, 30 is actually 27.97, and 24 is 23.98. Now the reason this is important is if you're matching cameras, you want to actually match the exact frame rates, otherwise you could have audio drift during multi-cam shots. So make sure that you match your cameras together. I would recommend shooting at these slightly slower speeds, so 
29.97 because that is more of the standard in video. You could shoot at true 30 or true 60 or true 24, but it's probably not very commonly used, so I would stay away from that. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing and hit that notification bell to see when the next video comes out. Also, if you have any questions about frame rates or anything else with video, leave it in the comments below and I'll get an answer to you. Anyway, that's it for this video and thank you for watching.